Hello again. Hello, it's Nick from HammondForHire.com. Um, I'm going to redo one that I've done already. Uh, it's about drawbars. Uh, we looked at drawbars earlier on, but um, oh, there I was in portrait mode, and it looked a bit a bit weird. And I don't think we really picked up all of the nuances of what was going on. So I thought I'd quickly go through again the drawbars. There they are, five sets, two pairs, two pairs, and some bass ones. What they do, and uh, how you generate sound from them, and how you can use them. I'll also explain uh, the inverse keys here and the importance of the B and the B flat. So, for the moment, all we need to know is if we have the inverse keys set to B here, these drawbars will run the top and these drawbars will run the bottom. If we set them both to B flat, then the other set of drawbars do the work, and same here, do the work, and back to B again. Uh, the bass drawbars are for the bass pedals, which I've had removed because I'm just so rock. So, uh, so <laughs> okay, so set to B. What do the drawbars do? Well, let's have a look at these here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Holding C down. Imagine a church organ. C for Hammond C3. Church C for church. These are supposed to emulate the round stops that you used to pull out. You pull out all the stops, heard that phrase, um, of the church organs, which would set the pipes working. They have different length pipes. In fact, in the later C3s and on the Hammond XK range, XK5, and all that, you do actually see the feet of the pipes as uh, 16 foot and uh, 8 foot. I think it goes down to one. Uh, on the early ones, which is a 1960 uh, C3, and I think we're looking at 1964 when these when the the numbers came on, they're just blank. So let's hold down a note C. No noise. What do we hear now? Right. So now you're hearing some bass. That's that represents a, a 16 foot pipe. Bass. On the letters, on the on the note C. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. What does the next one do? Ah, well, it's an octave higher. Same thing, octave higher, isn't it? But have you noticed also that the note is, is, a, is in a bit of a bad shape there? Can you hear it clicking in and out and what have you? Uh, there are wires over the contacts that are supposed to make sure that the sound stays um, constant. And these wires break down over the years. I mean, this is, what, 50, 57 years old. And they need redoing. They need re fi re refitting. Can you hear that? Okay, so that's a fault, but let's not worry about that. Let's move along, keep going, same note. There you go. What does the next one do? Oh, yeah. Well, that's not even a C, is it? Nor that. So you've got, you've got all these different notes. When you put them together, how can it make a C? I'm, I'm still not entirely sure, but there we go. But so let's start building a few in. We're building them in. It's starting to sound like a hammer now, isn't it? And you get them all out, and the way I play it, all of a sudden... It's John Lord, isn't it? Ah, you don't get much better than that, do you? So, that's how you draw in the... Build in the note up. You can look at it like a, um, a graphic equaliser if you want to. Let's uh, let's ha let's be basic. Let's be very basic, yeah. Or let's be really trebly and see how the note doesn't really sound like a C unless you've got those establishing ones there that put it back put it back into place. That's weird, isn't it? Or you can start to do like a little smiley face, you know, like a Fletcher Munson curve, like a loud miss curve. Bit of, bit of Leslie and it's quite jazzy, I guess. Put some percussion on. Very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, so we're in B here on the inverse keys. These ones are working. In B down here by the stomach, these ones are working. Exactly the same thing going on. If we were to take them into B flat, nothing, no noise at all. Why? Because we've flicked over to these ones here. So now all of a sudden these aren't doing what you want them to do, they're doing nothing. These are doing the work. Similarly down here, if that's even a word, these are doing the work. The reason why you've got this 
B and B flat, so you can change if you want to from a rhythm sound to a lead sound. There's your rhythm. To the B. And back again, rhythm and lead. So you've got the two sets, you can flick from one to another. You can be playing this one and setting this one up for the chorus or for the solo or whatever. Personally, both on the C3 and on the XK Pro that I use, I only use the one set. Okay, the, X, the, X, the XK doesn't have two sets, but the XK5 has two sets. Um, I only use the one because then I think there's a bit of creativity about the evening and what you're hearing and what you're playing and how the organ is coming back to you. You, you, know, you change the way. You change what you, you change the tone, you change the style, you change the feel, and your entire day and everything that you're hearing on stage that you're reacting to can be uh, can be changed and it makes the performance unique doesn't it i mean it makes the sound almost unique if you probably haven't chosen exactly that way to do exactly that song ever so i think that's quite cool i think that's a really good thing about the organ it's organic isn't it it really is organic so those are the draw bars interestingly what i will show you is the, about the contact system this is now the the new hammond xk5 has uh, the same contact system or, or a fabricated version of the same contact system as the C3 and the B3. The XK Pro does not. So the XK Pro, you press a note, you hear a note. On the C3 and XK5, you can hear each draw bar coming in if you press it uh, very gently, very carefully. So I'll try and do it. Can you hear that? You hear them? Oh, there's one. They all come in. The harder you press it. Now, if you're a thug like me, you're not really not going to notice it, are you, really? But that is how the sound is created. Isn't that amazing? Each draw bar comes in at a different moment. Now, they've recreated that with the XK5, and they think that gives it the, the same kind of feedback same sound of touch and the same sound of feel as you get on the Hammond, which is quite good. Uh, the useful, another useful feature of the draw bars, of course, is if you have the draw bars, say we set the bottom here, we're doing a bit of green on ends, who doesn't like that? Well, you can set the top draw bars with a percussion. So you can do your rhythm, you know, set the song up. And then when the solo comes, that's a different sound. You see what I mean? Or what a lot of people do, rhythm on the bottom, solo on the top, makes sense, doesn't it? So we'll have a rhythmy sound here. And then we go for the solo. well for me doesn't it I mean cold hands and all that um, just quickly have a look at these inverse keys so apart from the, the B and the B flat you've got preset keys just like you have with the XK Pro and with the XK5 and with synths for that matter so these are presets but they're not presets exactly how you would know them so you know they sound the same so here we go see the sounds changing brilliant presets but how are they actually done well, there's no, there's not, there's not much of your, your modern electronics here. You can, it's, it's all about mechanics. This is so round the back, all the draw bar contacts and all of the uh, to the tone wheels are um, set, and you have to sort of wrap them around a little screw and turn them around, and then so you you actually say for each of these black notes, you set which draw bar is coming out and at what number. It's a minefield around the back. It's that thing. When you look at the uh, in the back of the organ on the right in my in one of my previous videos, the third or fourth one I did, you see this whole bunch of wires around the back on the right hand side. And I actually I think I mentioned that they're they're draw bar presets. Worth going and having a look at the back at those and seeing how what they're like. So, what have I missed? I think we've got uh, both sets of draw bars. One, two, same down here. B flat B. We've got the bass ones which don't work because as you remember, I'm so rock. I've taken away the <laughs> the bass pedals. I'm not so rock at all. It's just the bass pedals are massive and in the way, and they kind of force you to sit down when you play. I don't sit down when I play, um, so I've got rid of them. Although they, they are quite useful. Do you think we've covered it? I think we've covered everything that we need to know at the moment with um, with draw bars. So you're feeding in the noise. You're feeding in the notes. 
up you can go one two three is a brilliant establishing one for blue stuff switch that fella off dark you know deep purple lazy grinding down the bottom put the top ones in a bit leslie on Very a bit quaint, you take a little bit of the establishment was off. Pretty cool, pretty nice. Or you can have them all out and with the kind of um, overdrive that I've got set on the organ, which is something else that we'll go into, you can start getting a bit naughty. Feeding it up. Who doesn't love that? So, draw bars. Hope you enjoy that. Uh, my name's Nick, Hammond for Hire. Have a look at the hammondforhire.com blog where these vlogs will go up as well. And um, get in touch. Get in touch uh, via YouTube or via the blog or whatever. Let me know what you think, whether I should just please, please, please stop. Um, whether there's anything that you want to know, I might be able to help you with it. I'm not the best player in the world, but I might be able to find out how to do it for you. Anything you like, just get in touch. Good to talk, innit? Thanks for your time. See you later. Bye.